Welcome to another episode of What Are You Reading? What Are You Writing? A weekly video podcast features creatives, writers, and readers when we come together to talk about books. I am your host, Karen E. Osborne, author of four novels and counting. I am so glad you're here. I think you're going to enjoy our next guest. I'm so glad you decided to come back. Great to see you all. I can't really see you, but I, I imagine all of you. And this is like super special day for both myself and for my guest, author Ruth Stevens. Hey, Ruth. Hi. Hi, Karen. So this is pub day for Ruth, and she's going to tell you about her book that is that came out today. And this is also episode number 200. But what are you reading? What are you writing? Three and a half years. I, I never imagined this when I started. Thank you. And, and to you. So we have a lot to celebrate today. And I hope you are having a wonderful day today as well. So Ruth, she, I love this. So she likes to write stories that both make you laugh out loud and cry out loud. <laughs> she likes getting both of those emotions mixed together. And that's how she hopes readers will respond to her um, duology. First one is today, my year of casual acquaintances. And then its sequel is the unexpected guests, which comes out in December. So this is so exciting, Ruth. When you started writing um, the first book, did you know that it was going to be a two-part series when you started out? No, um, I, I so didn't. Tell us. I mean, yeah, so tell it was kind of, I, I was in a writing critique group and um, there was a, a character of, the, so the main character is named Mar and there was a phone conversation with Mar's mother in New York. And one of my critique partners said, you know, you've had a couple of these phone calls with her mother. The mother doesn't really need to be in this book. She's never, you know, present. Um, you could do handle this information some other way. And I said, well, actually, she does need to be in it because she's going to be in the next one. And I didn't even know it until the words came out. Uh -oh. <laughs> so, so then I knew that I was going to have another book with these characters. So. so great. And I bet Mar's mother was the one who prompted you to say that. Like, what? You're not writing me out of the, out of the <laughs> book. <laughs> right? Our characters have so much agency, you know? They have so much oh, pull. They do. Pull they on take, take on their own lives, for sure. They do. So <laughs> share the, pr the premise mm -hmm. of, of the books. So the premise is, well, first of all, the setting is present day uh, in the South Bay of Los Angeles, which is a suburban coastal area of uh, LA County and where I happen to live, you know, right, right where you know, right, right what you know, that's me. Um, so anyway, in the first book, My Year of Casual Acquaintances, it's the story of this woman named Mar, who is recently divorced from, and her husband has left her for someone else after a long marriage. And she's 50 years old, but she's very young looking and fit. And she's bitter, but decides she's going to move on and, and shed her old life and change everything about it. And so that's the premise. And in this first year of, of her divorced single life, um, She's trying to reinvent herself and meet up with different people. And, and um, she, so if you, if you, anyone checks out the cover, um, it looks like a light beach read kind of thing. You know, you've got a dancing woman and clinking champagne glasses and so forth. And I think that's how Mar imagines her new life is going to be, you know, just light and fun and no commitments to anybody. Of course, life doesn't really work that way. Um, so that's where we go with her in the book. And the second book, um, The Unexpected Guests, actually picks up in the same scene that with the first book leaves off. Oh. Now they tell you, they tell writers we're not supposed to do that. You've, you've heard that? 
yeah. Yes. But I decided to ignore that rule <laughs> and I did it. Um, but there are there are differences. So so the first book is entirely first person in Mars point of view. But the sequel, we move to third person, and it's three uh, three of the characters from the first book, um, and all of them are close to Mar in different ways, and so it's their alternating POVs. So Mar is still very much a player in the book, but we're never inside her head in the second one. Yeah, it's other characters. So. Um... What, what do you love about Mar? What 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 is there about this character that you you really admire? Well, oh, I love. admire she's she's smart, she's funny, um, she's very capable, except when it comes to cooking. Not not so good at cooking. <laughs> <laughs> but that's her choice. And um, I think she also has a lot of personal integrity and courage. I mean, she's been through a really tough rejection. Um, but she's not one to feel sorry for herself or give up, you know, she's just soldiering on and trying yeah. to start over. So she also <laughs> is very snarky, especially in the early parts of the book. And I, I like snark, but <laughs> not every reader does. So some people might put that, you know, in the negative column. <laughs> well, is there anything about her that you don't like? Yeah, well, I think her main, to me, her main fault is that she tends to be emotionally distant and she buries herself in her work. I mean, her job, she loves her job and her job is really her comfort zone. And she retreats from life into the work and has done that for many years, we will learn. And she, I, I think it's gotten in the way of her relationships. Um, so as it can. As yeah. it can, yes. And we have to discover these things about ourselves. Mm -hmm. I'm at one of my books, I'm um, Reckonings. I would even listening to it, uh, you know, a, as an audio book. So I, I, you know, I'd read the book you know, a thousand times as you yeah. and I, you know, we read our books over and over again to get right. it right. And now I'm listening to it and I'm still getting annoyed with her. I do love her. I love yeah. Roxy. But I'm thinking like, no, don't. <laughs> yeah, Mar does some pre pretty annoying and sometimes dumb things uh, that she comes to regret, sometimes immediately after she does them. Um, but but she's, yes. that she's, she is learning from her mistakes as she goes along. So yeah. I like that about her. Yeah. So maybe because this is so difficult for me, mm -hmm. but how did you like to, to be to write both funny, funny books? as well as heart, you know, that heart wrenching as well. You know, how did you hone that skill or was it just part of you or how did well, that come about? So I, I think um, writing the funny stuff is harder than writing serious prose. Um, what is it this, what was the saying that comedy is hard, dying is easy? I don't know who said that, but it's well known. But um, a couple of things I would say to anyone trying to write funny is that, first of all, just to think of what you find humorous. And I mean, you know, it can be a book or a movie. It can be your favorite uncle. Um, and think about what specifically tickles your funny bone about that. And then try to emulate that style of humor. So I think that's part of what I've done. And then the other thing that's been good for help to me has been um, writing dialogue. So before I ever wrote a novel, I wrote two plays. And I, oh. I was going for, like you said, I like to make people laugh and cry. So I was going for that. And I knew I would have to come up with lines that would make the audience laugh. So that was really good good technical practice in writing yeah. fun. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's interesting that you say that. I find plays and movies teach me so much mm -hmm. about dialogue, about yeah. expressions, you mm -hmm. know, ways that, that actors convey yep. their feelings. And so when I'm watching a movie or a play, I think about how could I capture that expression that, you know, on that person's face and stuff. I love the theater and movies. I have to think about that because I love funny movies. So I'm going to 
I'm going to approach it with that in mind. Like, yeah, <laughs> try it. I hope it <laughs> maybe this maybe this would work for me. So you mentioned that in the next book, mm -hmm. um, there's going to be three characters whose point of view we're going to be in. Yeah, I was wondering as you started the first book, and let's repeat the my year of casual acquaintances. Um, why did you come up with your cast of characters? You know, did 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 they just appear? How, did you plot them? Like, how did the how did yeah. the cast come? Yeah, I'm I'm a plotter. I'm not a pantser. I'm a plotter, and so I knew. So the book is episodic. That um, it's a, a year. In, in the life of Mar, and uh, I divided it into 12 parts, and each part is a month. So I literally took a calendar and started filling in who these acquaintances might be, you know, and each one, each month has a unique impact on her life. And so some of them were obvious, like I knew there would be a main love interest, maybe a couple of flirtations, you know, a couple of good friendships and then some that didn't work out so well but but it was 12 is a lot so after a while I was just running out of ideas and so I had to brainstorm with myself and get you know, a little more creative so I ended up like one character is a little boy um, another one is a Wheaton Terrier who was based on my real life former dog so finally I managed, managed to fill the calendar so I had all 12 and That's I hope wonderful that route. readers find them interesting. <laughs> I think they will. I think we've already got them intrigued. That, sounds, <laughs> that just sounds absolutely wonderful. So I know you're just like you just published today and you have another one coming out in December. Dare I ask you what's next? Well, what's what's next? Uh, I would like to make the duology into a trilogy. Um, I have a lot, I have a lot of notes for that, but to be honest, having two books come out in the same year has been rather daunting yes. and I have found, and I, I know I'm not a lone voice in this, like a lot of writers, the marketing and publishing aspects, uh, can be kind of overwhelming at times mm -hmm. and can even suck the creative juices right out of you or at least yes. they do for me maybe yes. not everybody yes. <laughs> so I'm hoping down the road when I get through these two launches which are in rapid succession that maybe I'll have a little more time to sit back and write something that isn't a blog or promotional copy or you know the kind of things that have been occupying me lately yeah no I, I know just how you feel every time I finish a book I think okay we probably don't have another one in us anyway. Oh, yeah. And, mm -hmm. you know, just, just take a break. And then I think, oh, why do you have another one in me? And next thing you know, I keep thinking I'm going to take a break and then I don't take a break. Just mm -hmm. moves, moves on to the next <laughs> one. But you're right, the, the marketing and, um, which is, has its own joys, not the worrying about it and trying to line it up. But once you're doing it, there is joy, but it can take, it can take up so much time away from our writing. Yeah. yeah. Yes, it can. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of work, right? Yes. So what mm -hmm. books have you read in the past mm -hmm. that have had, or maybe there's even one recently that's had a profound effect on you that it, that it somehow informed your writing or it affected your life in some way? Uh-huh. Well, a couple of the books that um, it, it had a lot of influence on me and inspired these books, especially the first one, since I didn't know yet there would be a second one, yes. um, Olive Kitteridge uh, by Elizabeth Strout. In fact, one reader told me she thought that Mar reminded her of, of Olive. She said it's, she's like Olive Kitteridge, except attractive. So, <laughs> and I thought that's a good description. Um and another book is Less by Andrew Sean Greer. And that it won the Pulitzer Prize in 2018. And mm -hmm. it, it's, I just love that book. It's, it's also episodic. And it's about a gay man whose uh, partner has left him to marry someone else. And he decides to go on a trek around the world to avoid having to go to the wedding. And he's, he's very sad and lonely and he's worried about aging and a lot of other you know, things. So it's sad and it's poignant, but actually the book is hilarious. 
And he said, I want to get this right. Uh, Greer said about that book, he said, comedy is a sad story that you decide to tell in a different way. Ooh, and I that's love a great that line. Yeah. So that, yeah. that quote has really stayed with me and, and had an influence on me. Yes, so. I love that. Sad story that you decide to tell in another way. Yeah, wow. And is there something recently that you've read that you can recommend to our audience? I have several on my list. Okay. So Good. a couple of bestsellers I've read lately are Tom Lake by Ann Patchett. And, uh, did you like I, that? I did. I did. I, I, I didn't, I haven't finished it. Okay. I got, I saw a couple of mixed, um, she's amazing. I mean, she's an amazing. She is. And I listened um, to the audiobook, which is Meryl Streep. Uh, well, not you can't shabby. beat that. <laughs> yes, you can't beat that. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to finish. Maybe I'll go to the, to the audio. Mm -hmm. What else do you have? Uh, and then uh, Table for Two by Amor Tolls, uh, who people know, know best for Gentlemen in Moscow. This is most famous. But they both, I think, write just beautifully. And they, I like their characters. And they tell good stories. Um, you know, what more can you really want than that? And the other thing is, since signing with Black Rose Writing, I've been reading a lot of my fellow authors, you know, like yourself. Yeah. And one thing that's great is that it's taken me outside of my comfort zone of literary and book club fiction into reading other genres. And recently I've been I've read some crime thrillers like, well, yours, Tangled Lies, which was awesome. I just you know, was so Thank impressed you. by that book. And I've read a couple of the Tyler Zahn novels by Cam Torrance. He's and wonderful, isn't he? he? Is, oh my God. He's, ah. yeah, I'm so impressed. Um, and uh, what else was I going to say? Um, oh yeah, I just did want to say, I have not yet read your new one, uh, True Grace, is that the, mm -hmm. am I getting the name mm -hmm. right? It's, which yes. is historical fiction. Historical fiction, but, yeah. But congrats, I mean, you've been getting lots, you know, awards and accolades and all kinds of things yeah, on that. Thank that's, you. That's very exciting. And um, thank you. I, I also, like to change I gotta that. tell you, Karen, <laughs> I, I can't believe that you can write a crime thriller and historical fiction. I mean, I, I would not be capable of making that kind of a leap as a writer. So oh, well, thank you. I, I, people tell me that if you stick with one genre, you do better, you're more successful because mm -hmm. then you build up an audience, mm -hmm. but you know, you write what you love. You write what that, is telling well, you to do right now. That's what I do. And obviously what you do, but yeah, there are people where it's more of a business and, you know, I'm going to write this series of, you know, romances or mysteries or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yes. And that's fine yeah. too. I mean, it, yeah, it's a perfectly fine way. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I just interviewed a writer like that, and she actually um, said that she researched, like, what, what were people buying right now? What were people yeah. reading right now? And she had enough confidence in her ability to write and enough interest that she wrote for the market, but yeah. not in a uh, not in a, a negative way, in a, in a creative way, you know, I'm going right. to, I'm going to write something that maybe somebody would read. <laughs> so yeah. We all hope for that, right? It can still be a good book. Yeah. My, my, be... my first novel, I have a debut novel, stage seven, uh, which is about two families grappling with Alzheimer's. And I mean, people, oh. people really like the book, but a lot of people won't read the book. So yeah. Yeah, that's the trouble with writing about what you what you want to write about as an author. Yeah, yeah, it's a little too close to home for some folks, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Well, this has been such a lovely, lovely conversation. I know the audience wants to be able to find your books. They want to be able to find out more about you, be in touch with you. You mentioned blogs, so please tell the tell our audience where they can find you. Okay. Well, the, the easiest thing to do, if you only do one thing, is just to, to look at my website, which is ruthfstevens.com. So that's Ruth, F as in Frank, Stevens with a V, dot com. And please sign up for my mailing list. I, I have a, a newsletter. It's really once a month. I don't spam people. I just send out updates on these new titles, and I have book deals and giveaways and reviews of other books. So, you know, it's, it's pretty painless, I think, for the reader. 
And and also, I'm on social media, uh, Facebook and Instagram mainly. But again, the easiest thing, if you go to my website on the homepage, you click on the social media links, then you can find me and, and follow me. Yeah. Excellent. So, so I hope that is exactly what you will do. You will follow Ruth. You will buy her books. You'll read her books. And you know what I'm going to say, because I say it all the time, write a review. It is so important to us. So sign up for her newsletter, check out her website, buy and read a book, or you know, to get it out in the library. We so love it when you do buy it. And if you, but however you read it, we're happy. And then please let her know you met her on what are you reading? What are you writing? Until next Tuesday, have a wonderful, wonderful week. Bye, everybody. Bye.